Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with a new Cinema 4D tutorial on how to fracture, explode, blow up, and do all sorts of destruction with objects and buildings in Cinema 4D. So if you're thinking of disaster movies or anything like that, there's always buildings and objects falling all over the place and breaking into parts. And there's earthquakes happening or stuff getting destroyed. And it's a really cool thing you can do in CG is to kind of composite elements that were in scenes and then figure out how to destroy them and break up the parts. So this is something we'll work towards of this little scene with something that starts like a building. And if we do a quick render, it's not really textured, but it does look like a building that's kind of put together. And then we play and it kind of just implodes as if it's kind of falling apart. So the first thing to do would be if you are compositing this into an actual shot, say this shot of Chicago, maybe it's Transformers or something like that, you would want to have a reference of your actual shot and building and then recreate the actual building. But let's just keep it a little basic and just do a basic little building and then figure out how to tear it apart and have it fall down and have some dynamics and some little dynamics controls and things like that. So I'll get started in Cinema 40. I'm going to make a new file. And let's just make a really basic skyscraper building. So I'll make a cube and just add fillets, put it at two, make this a little bigger. And then holding E, I can make a copy of this without even going up over here by just dragging up and holding command and then letting go of the mouse. And then I'll press T to scale that down and move it into place and do the same thing. So command to copy, scale it down. And then let's get some quick antennas on there with just some cylinders and I'll bring this up and you'd want to do a lot better job of modeling if it's actually mimicking a building, but this is just for the sake of a placeholder building to show what we can do. So there's our nice little starter building so we can have something to talk about fracturing objects and dynamics and all of that. So what I'm going to do to cut this into chunks is actually use a free plugin called Throssy, which you can get online and it's at Nitro 4D. So it's a really cool plugin, does a really good job. And what we want to do is use that to basically skip the step of having to use it, the knife tool. So K okay, and make tons of cuts in these. So I'm going to get out of that tool. And what I want to do is make this one object and then cut it all up at once. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to grab a connect object. And then I'm going to drop everything into it and I'm going to press C and now I have one building and I can delete this extra tag. And if I press N B to show my lines, I have just one solid object of this building. And then I'm going to go to plugins, Throssy, Throssy after you've put that into cinema 40. And what this is going to do is cut this up into pieces based on this pieces number. And it's going to still cut each little part up. So I'm going to get 50 antennas, 50, this block in each block. So if I want to do the antennas separately, if I didn't want that many pieces, I could, but not too much of a worry when we're just doing an example. And then you just do break now. And what's nice about this plugin is that it works really fast. I just, I'm not speeding this up at all through editing. This is actually just the plugin working and it's going to cut this all up, do a bunch of knife cuts and kind of just go through the process. And then when it gets done, it's going to spit out all of those pieces in groups. All right. So I have, that ran and you can see that we have just tons of pieces and the first thing we want to do with this is it adds all these materials and tags and selection tags and we don't need any of that so i'm just going to select all of these tags and just delete and then i can just take all of these pieces out of these groups because it makes these little groups for the fracture objects and i'm just going to grab all of those and take them out and have them just floating in my window and then I'll end up with those groups at the bottom that are just empty shells. So I can just grab those and delete. And then I have all of these objects. So what I want to do is grab all of them. So I'll grab the bottom one, select and shift at the top one. And I'm going to press option G to put those in a null. And then I have just my one building. And if I was starting this actually close up or you could see anywhere, it actually does a pretty good job of these are pretty invisible but you might want to make a copy of this building before you cut it up just so there would be one frame where then you switch to this destruction one. So you don't have any frames before it's destroyed where you can already see where these knife cuts are going to come. So what I can do to break this apart is I'm just going to look in my side view, put it on where the ground is and 
I'm gonna make a floor, so I'll just grab a plane and make it like 5,000 by 5,000 and make sure my building null is sitting right on top of that. And I'm just gonna rename this building. And what I wanna do as one option is put a dynamics tag in this whole building and have it all be applied to it. So I'm gonna right click on this null and go to simulation tags, rigid body, and that's gonna give it basic dynamics. And for the plane, I'm gonna do simulation collider body, and that's gonna make it collide with dynamics so they fall on the ground, but the ground won't move. And if I just play, it's not gonna work right because it's just applying that tag to this null. So what we wanna do and why this plugin is useful for this sort of thing is because we can grab all of these parts, put this dynamics tag on it, and then on collision, I'm gonna change it to apply to children, individual elements, all. And then if I play, it's gonna just break apart and kind of collapse because they're all touching and they kind of fall all over the place. And that's a good start. It's definitely, if we do a command R and maybe even just give this kind of a basic material so we can see what's happening. So I'll just give it kind of like a gray and that's fine. And I'll just apply that to the whole building. And then in render settings, I'll change it to physical and turn on ambient occlusion. And I'll just delete these extra materials that were there and I'll just duplicate this building one by holding command, double click that and make this white just so we can have a texture on that ground plane just so we can see what we're doing. And to see that we'll need a basic light and the lighting of this example isn't really important. I just want to be able to point out what's happening. So I'll just put that kind of over here so we can kind of see what's going on and just copy paste that. So there's kind of a fill light again, just for the sake of pointing out what's happening. So and in my light so I can see what's happening on the ground shadows, I can turn on soft shadows again, just for the sake of discussion. So I get my building at the beginning and then if I play and just pause one of these frames and do a quick command R, you can see our building is collapsing. So you can do a lot more with lights and materials, but what I wanna focus on is fracturing objects and kind of controlling these dynamics. So that's all good and fine if a building kind of just explodes, but that's probably not what we're gonna to wanna to do. There's probably either gonna be an implosion in it or there's gonna be something hitting it. So let's do something hitting it first. And I'm just gonna put a camera in here so I can keep my place. So let's say maybe there's a big avalanche on a hill or something. So on my ground plane, I'm gonna grab a bend, drop it onto the plane, fit to parent, and then move this over, scale it down, and rotate it 90 degrees, change it to within box, and turn the strength up. Again, just so I can have a little platform, like there's some stuff falling down hills that are out of frame or something. So since we kind of cut up this ground plane to get a hill, it's gonna kind of explode totally weirdly, and that's not what we want at all. So first of all, if you're following along exactly like this and you put this little bend for a hill in on the plane, you'll want to change the dynamics tag for the plane from shape automatic to a static mesh. And that's going to read it as all of the actual polygons. And it's not going to be too big of a deal with render time just because it's not that complex of an object, but otherwise it's just going to see the whole flat plane and see it as intersecting and not work. So I'll play and we're back to this. But now if we want this building to stay up until something happens, say I have, you know, this giant sphere that's going to start at the top of this hill and we'll scale this up. It'll be huge. It'll be like the attack of the huge 3D spheres or something. I'm going to put this at the top of this hill and I'm going to add another collider tag to this. So simulation rigid body. And if I said collider, I meant simulation, rigid body, dynamics tag. So that's fine. And then if I play, that's going to drop and start to roll down. But what we want to do on the building is we can change it under dynamics from trigger immediately to a trigger on collision. So when something hits it, it will then trigger the dynamics tag and break apart based on the force of that object. So now if I play, and it might need some more frames to really see what's happening. And you can kind of see it. Let's add 300 down here in my timeline. 
So now if I play the building stays set and here comes our giant attack of the spheres and then bang knocks over the whole building and the whole building's got destroyed and it's all gone. And what's cool about this is we could have a whole city this way so if we wanted to just make an instance of this building, slide it over. Again, just to make a point, what we could do, let's create a couple in here, just using instances. And I'm gonna shift F back to the beginning because you always wanna start dynamic simulations on the first frame, play, our whole city is gonna stay there and then kind of slow down and knock over everything. So that's pretty cool. We can have stuff running into our buildings and destroying it that way. But what if we just want to kind of have it looks like it's collapsing and impacted by something that we can't necessarily see, but maybe these buildings are just in the background and we know there's like a monster attacking or a transformer or something. And we just want to kind of see buildings start to explode. Well, let's turn off this sphere and let's keep it on trigger on collision. And what we can do is get something like a sphere or a cube or anything really. So I'll just get a cube and I'm going to put it above the building, scale it up as big as the building. And on my cube, I'm going to add a simulation tag collider because we don't want this to fall down on its own. We want it animated and then we can use that to crush the building in this case. So this isn't going to move or anything based on dynamics, but it will cause things to react. So if I just turn on my position keyframe and make a keyframe down here, and then at like 150, push it partially through the building, make another keyframe, and then if I shift F back to the beginning and play, we can see that it's gonna crush the building and slowly push it down, and then when they all kind of are hitting, they'll all react and kind of fall down. Now, if we're rendering, we don't really want to see this, obviously. We just want to see that the building is collapsing and we don't want this shape. And I'll just throw this texture on it for the sake of discussion. So what we could do is on these little dots, click twice on the bottom one. So it's visible in editor so we can see it here, but not visible in render. So we play, it's going to come down, crush our building. And if we render, it's not there. And if we don't want to see it, or if we had like the camera up here and we want to be able to see what we're doing, maybe this is the shot. What we can do in our editor is make a basic material down here and I'll double click that. And I'm just going to turn on transparency and off everything else. So I basically have a non-existent transparent material and then I'll drop that onto the cube so I can see through it in my viewport. I can see what I'm doing and then I know once I render, it's not going to be there. So this is a really good way to kind of collapse the building or kind of control it. But one little thing that's happening is you can see they're kind of flying all over the place and that's probably not what would happen. It would probably be a little more controlled. And one thing I like to do to control dynamics is kind of have invisible objects blocking them from flying all over the place but not so much that it looks like they're actually hitting something. And what I mean by that is if up here in our objects, we grab a tube and look at our top view and just scale this up to be outside of the edges of the building. And then I'll just scale it as tall as the building in my side and just scale the whole thing up a bit. What we can do is kind of use this as an invisible container for our building. So, Everything still reacts and collapses, but it doesn't quite fly all over the place, especially the parts at the top, because we want it to kind of implode. And to get this even smoother on this tube, we can add a taper deformer up here. So I'll go to taper, drop that in the tube, and then on taper, fit to parent, and turn up the strength, and then turn down the curvature. And I'm gonna add that same invisible material to this tube, so I can see through it and then add a same dynamics tag simulation collider body just so this will block everything. And now if I play, building is going to get crushed. And before we start playing and seeing what happens, we want to make sure that this isn't intersecting because it is still a dynamics object. So I'll just take this tube and 
Option D to get rid of that and, and just scale it up enough so I know none of this is actually hitting my building. And since this tube is hollow, same thing as the floor that we kind of distorted. We want to go to the dynamics tag and change collision to static mesh, and then it's going to see the hole in it. And then if we play, it's going to get pushed down, start to collapse, but it's not going to fly all over the place. And it ends up in this nice little pile that we have. And we can see as it's pushing down, it's being contained, but it doesn't quite look like they're hitting a wall because it's wide enough. And we get this nice little kind of pile of rubble at the bottom. And again, if you're you know seeing this from different angles, it's nice because in your viewport, you can see through these invisible objects and then I'll just play again. But once we render, we know that they're not going to be there. So this is a really good way to get started with fracturing objects, understanding how to you know, break them apart with dynamics, kind of some specific dynamics tags, points like the shape, as well as applying objects to children using the quick Throsty plugin and kind of a good starting point to how to fracture, break up and break apart objects in Cinema 4D, as well as using some invisible dynamics to push things around and react on collision. So this has been Sean Frangella showing you how to do some really fun fracturing and dynamics objects to break apart buildings or anything in Cinema 4D. As always, be sure to subscribe on YouTube and Vimeo at slash Sean Frangella and check me out on Twitter slash Sean Frangella and Facebook.com slash Vital if you want to ask questions, request tutorials. And as always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.